présenter. <rire> euh, je m'appelle Francesca euh, and I'm going to speak English. <rire> je, je voulais faire ça en français, mais euh, mon français c'est horrible. Parce que maintenant, et je n'ai pas parlé français pour un. Peut-être l'année prochaine, on va faire ça en français. This year, we're going to do this in English. <laughs> So, my name is Francesca, I'm the WordPress Community Manager at SiteGround, international web hosting company. But for the purposes of this talk, I'm the founder of ChipUB, who's a blog, as, and this whole talk is based on this experience. So, it's the year 2013, I'm living abroad and I'm miserable. I am juggling a day job that I don't particularly enjoy, and I'm trying to start my own business. And what do I do? I go online and read blogs uh, from American entrepreneurs that tell me that I can start a six-figure business, basically out of nothing, that I can get 100,000 followers on Twitter in a few months, uh, that I can build a business that will make me money while I sleep. I would really love that. But, <laughs> you know this kind of advice, but it's not It doesn't really work for me. So, I'm miserable, but one good thing comes out of following all these blogs and chats and forums is that I meet other Italians, other women from Italy who are also starting these online businesses, which was kind of a new thing for Italians at the time. And so we start wondering, can we do something in Italian that will be helpful and that will fit the Italian market. Can we help other female creative entrepreneurs? That's how we saw each other. Um, to all get better at this new adventure of making money while we sleep. Something that I don't think I ever did, by the way. So if that was the advice you were looking for, I'm sorry, I'm not the right person. <laughs> but <laughs> I know about blogs. <laughs> so since at the time I was making a living of building websites, I was like, I can do a blog. We can do this pretty easily. So let's put together some people, a blog, and let's start this. And of course, we will do this for free. We will share our knowledge and skills for free because we are on a mission. We wanted to make it easier for female creative entrepreneurs in Italy to make a life that they like. Five years later, which is kind of a long time in internet <laughs> terms, uh, ChipUB is going strong. ChipUB is a terrible SEO name that will never, n never got us discovered. It's Casa Più Bottega, home plus studio. No one makes the association, <laughs> no matter how many times we write this. Uh, but this is what the name is based on, because most of the people that read and write for GPB are home workers, and this is why we call it with this incredibly unuseful name. <laughs> and this is the website, and as you can see, it's super simple. There's nothing innovative about the design. It's a blog, because, and, and we like it to be a blog because we concentrate on content <laughs> above everything else. So this is should be basically yesterday. Um, and we did pretty good. <laughs> When I say that in five years, <laughs> we're still going strong, uh, these people, these numbers might seem very small to other companies and, you know, company business blogs and stuff like that. But for us, always remember that we're talking about this niche of female creative entrepreneur, and we basically cover it all in Italy. <laughs> That's more or less the capacity that that market has, and we cover it all. So we have 80 authors. Uh, we're very, very popular on Facebook, where we have over 12,000 people. We have a really good engagement rate with our post. Uh, we have a really good number of readers, monthly visitors to the blog. And I think one of the stats that really say a lot about the quality of the content is that 56% of male readers. The whole thing 
is declined at feminine um, or feminine. I don't know how you say it in English, actually. <laughs> so all the articles are, hey, sister, uh, new girl, you should do this. And the fact that 56% of our readers are men that can overcome the you know, fear of being called, hey, girl, <laughs> It means that the content is valid and people read us because the content is good and not because we're a blog for creative, female creative entrepreneurs. So on September 5th, uh, 24th, we celebrated our fifth anniversary and I have to say I learned a lot about <laughs> running this blog and not just about blogging but in general about uh, business, of course, and um, supervising distributed teams. 80 people is not a small team. And uh, so this is more or less what it goes behind the scenes and a bit of uh, uh, tips if you want to start a blog for your business or community. So let's start with the basics. So if you have multiple author authors, the first thing you need to do is actually manage all the roles and not just in terms of hierarchy, you know, company hierarchy who does that but actually in WordPress how you manage all these different people. So we assign different roles to uh, each user and to have a more granular control over what everyone can do we use this plugin I don't know if any one of you knows it uh, members by Justin Tadlock it's a free plugin you can find it in the wordpress.org uh, repo so we kept the same names that WordPress assigns to user, admins, editors, authors, and subscribers. Uh, but we, uh, for each role, we went a bit more into details of what kind of permissions we want everyone to have by using this plugin. So for example, you see we only have three admins. It's me, uh, the founder, the actual editor-in-chief, and the developer that helps us with the code when we need it. Then we have editors, they, ha they can do whatever they want except for installing plugin and themes. But in terms of uh, what they can do in the posts themselves before and after publishing, they can do everything. Authors are the people that are active in the blog in this particular season. Uh, they can post, they can upload their post, edit it up until publication. When the post is published, they cannot uh, edit anything anymore. And then we have the subscribers who are the people that wrote for us in the past and they're right now uh, temporarily or permanently out of the picture. Uh, so they cannot do anything besides uh, editing their own user profile. And this is how the plugin looks. So you can honestly go into each part of the website and decide what capability is going to be granted and which one is going to be denied. So it's in Italian, you have articles, pages, media, comments, Yoast SEO, taxonomies, appearance, some are in Italian, some are in English, doesn't matter. <laughs> you get the idea. Some polyglots didn't do the <laughs> job. But you can go and actually change at a very uh, granular level what everyone can do. There, there are two reasons why we have this kind of management of roles. The first one is a tight editorial ship. We, as I said, content above all. So it's very important for the newsroom, what I would call the newsroom, so the editor-in-chief and the editors, to supervise the content that we put out there. So if, uh, if uh, an author wants to change uh, their content, even years after publication, it's not a problem. We actually really encourage that. We actively edit the, the first post we had because five things are a long time in the internet. But we always want to have the supervision of an editor that has the general editorial overview for the whole blog in mind before we go and do something. And security. Uh, reducing the, the capabilities that people have to do stuff on the website reduces the surface of attack in case of hacking. So uh, we try to keep a higher level of access to very few people that at least we trust to have good passwords. 
<laughs> like at a minimum. Um, so now we have the people. We need to keep them busy, right? So the first thing we do, uh, decide how many times we want to publish in a week to create, to put these people at work and to create a calendar. Um, what I would say, uh, the experience here is don't post every day if that's not working for you and if it doesn't work with your schedule and stuff like that. We started out posting five, to six times a week. Then about two years in, we did a survey. We had almost 1,000 replies and the vast majority said, you're posting too much. We cannot keep up with you. <laughs> so we went down to three times a week and we started doing longer articles. So they really feel like a mini essay. So I'm not, if someone is writing about Facebook, they're not just going to write what's the difference between a profile and a page, which is a content that you can find anywhere and written in basically 400 words. <laughs> You'll find a 2,000 words article that will really deep dive and go deep into the issue itself. Um, so we moved to three articles a week and basically in about two months the readership doubled. So <laughs> we were, I mean, the people that replied were right in asking us this. It all starts with paper and pencil. I print out, or the editor-in-chief, it depends who's doing the calendar uh, in this period, we print out a Google Calendar empty sheet for every month we want to fill up. We say what are the days where we're going to publish. I write down, when I do it, I do it manually, I write down the list of all the authors and start going, you know, one by one, putting them in the calendar and put a number next to their name. So I make sure that everyone gets exposure. Uh, if someone asks, no, I want to write just twice a year, no problem. If someone says, I want to write every month, no problem. But it's really, really a, a handmade, a simple approach that has worked very well for us. Uh, so we always also have a couple of backup articles. So, so if someone suddenly cannot deliver, we can have someone, something to post. But also if we don't post because we miss... Uh, one date, it's not a problem. Again, it's a volunteer run uh, blog. We all do this for free. So our readers are very understanding if we miss something because they know the story behind the blog itself. Uh, once we have the calendar on paper and it works, uh, every author basically covers one topic. So I might use the two terms interchangeably because one author one topic so we make sure the calendar all the topics are spread out during the year uh, so we know that we cover all the things we want to cover for that period uh, so after this we move the calendar to Trello which is a free project management tool uh, and we keep it really simple there we don't actually manage the workflow there uh, we use it to store stuff basically and this is how it looks very simple. This column, it's ideas for articles. So if someone uh, reads something in a blog or in the newspaper or they come up with an idea and they think the topic is good for GPB, they'll put it here and we might assign it to someone. Then we have the calendar, uh, the dates, the blog or the other things we're doing. We have a bit of archive with the workflow and a few documents. So if someone doesn't remember what are all the steps and it will become clear in a moment why someone will, will not remember all the steps, <laughs> can go there and see all the steps. And finally, we have that column where you see Chiedi all'esperta, ask me anything. It's something that we used to do on Facebook that worked very well for us, but then at some point we were all tired of doing it, but we're keeping it there because maybe one day we will have the energy again to do it. So we'll keep it there for better times. And this is what the calendar at the end of the day really looks like. So we have the date, we have the topic, the, p the person, and every time something gets done, we just check it. So we have the authors, we have the calendar. How does a post get published at the end of the day? It's a very long process. And it's the pride and joy of TPB. And 
five years later, every time I meet readers, one of the things that they always highlight is the quality of the content and the fact that you can tell that behind each post there's a research. It's not just words thrown on a page because, oh, we have to publish something, <laughs> you know? So, and this is why. So behind the scenes, we have a number of people. I added their um, Twitter handle. If you want to follow them, some of them post in, uh, in English and they're very interesting people. So we have an editor in chief right now. It's Daniela Scapoli. And this person is in charge really of picking the best possible content for the blog. Uh, she reads the proposals we get from authors. Uh, she communicates with existing authors to come up, for example, with a series of posts on a certain topic that will fit uh, that period. Uh, she might reach out to two authors who want to feature in the, in the blog. Um, she puts together the editorial calendar, or I put together the editorial calendar. This is a bit um, depends on how busy we are. And, uh, but in general, she has the grand vision of what it will look like in TPUB for the next few months. I don't know, email marketing. So she'll decide that for the next three months, we will concentrate on writing about the strategy of behind email marketing. And then for three months, we will write about MailChimp to talk about the tools of the email marketing. But there needs to be a vision. Otherwise, everything is going to be a bit disconnected. And then we have the editors. This is the name they have on WordPress. But I like to think of them as the newsroom because they all have different roles. So we have copy editing in addition to Daniela which is also a web, web writer in her daily life. We have another lady called uh, Anna Maria. Uh, she's a business writer and she reads every post and see that everything is okay. Typos, uh, syntax. Sometimes she, he, she has to rewrite quite a lot, but it's okay because sometimes we really want to talk about a certain topic. We cannot find any strong writer for that. So we will go to the best possible person to talk about that, even if they're not a strong writer, and we will help them out with the writing because we believe they really have something to say, and maybe they don't know how to say it in the best possible way, so we will help them out. Uh, we have photo editing, media. Every post comes with a picture uh, and with a, a, a sentence over it, so she reads the whole article and she decides what kind of image will go better with that content to describe the content. Uh, we have Barbara that takes care for of Instagram, uh, Christiana Facebook, and then we have Tatiana. So every, every article is also checked for SEO. And uh, she can give some suggestion how to make it more readable. Uh, we're not super interested in getting tons of readers just because we have something to to sell them because we're not selling anything. <laughs> so we're not optimizing for search engine with a business uh, objective in mind, but basically because we think that the content is good and we want to reach out as many pos possible people. And in fact, we're very, very well ranked for a number of articles that if you look for that in Italy, you will find us in the first position, including some articles on SEO. So <laughs> we're doing well. Uh, what it means is that basically every article gets read by four to six people before it gets published. And this is how we maintain the quality. And it's a lot of work, as you can imagine. And this is why a lot of people are doing this, uh, because we really believe what comes out of there needs to be the highest quality possible. Uh, and the whole process <laughs> is very long, and it takes a lot of steps. We're going to go uh, briefly over everything. So the first step is talking to the author. Uh, the editor-in-chief will communicate with the author and come up together with topics they can talk about. And sometimes we're not really sure that the topic will fit, so we might ask them to rearrange stuff. Uh, so the editor-in-chief will work closely with the author. Then finally, and this can happen also months before the article is uh, published. The author uh, uploads the post in WordPress in the website, 
And then the editor-in-chief has the first to read. She goes through it, suggests some changes if there are changes that need to be done. And then the editor work on it. It can be the editor-in-chief, because again, she's a web writer, or it can be Anna Maria, which is a business writer, and she go and check that everything is all right. Then Nidia comes in. She reads all the article to see what's the best possible <laughs> image for that, and she will upload the image. Then Tatiana does her SEO magic, whatever that is. Final round of changes, something needs to be done. Let's check this one more time. Sometimes we ask people to read it that have no idea what this topic is about, especially if it's a, we have a um, commercialista, a chartered uh, accountant. I don't know what it's called in, <laughs> in, uh, in French. And we have a lawyer. So sometimes they write articles that we want to make sure people understand what they're saying, right? So we ask someone to read it. And then finally, the post gets scheduled and it goes out into the world. After the publishing, we still publish on Facebook and on Twitter. So as you can see, a lot of steps and a lot of people checking what's going on. Uh, so yes, there's a lot of communication going on. And we do it mostly, mainly in two ways. The first one, we use this free plugin. Have you heard of it, EditFlow? Has anyone heard of it? It's a really good plugin. Uh, it's developed by Automatic. Uh, you can also find it in WordPress.org, and it's a plugin that provides with lots of uh, function editorial functionality, I would say, that it can be very useful for team that collaborate on a blog. Uh, there's tons of features. We mostly use it for editorial comments. So it will add some boxes at the end of your post where you can comment the article and reply to communication. This is exactly what it looks like. It's like Facebook comments, basically. So you have um, the first say, hey, I'm, I, I'm sorry I haven't replied to you before. I should uh, put the image for your article. Can you please give me the, the sentence to publish? Oh, sorry, uh, okay, use this. And then the editor comes in and says, ah, thank you for the proposal, I vote for this one. And then, all right, that's good. Image ready, ready to go. And these are <laughs> the comments that you find it basically in each article we publish. And then, despite my hate for Facebook groups <laughs> and my love for Slack, uh, I try to move everyone to Slack it didn't go well. Uh, most of the people that write for, for GPB are on Facebook, so it doesn't matter how much I want to move them somewhere else, it makes complete sense to be on Facebook. And this is where we brainstorm our idea. Uh, we have two groups actually, the editor's newsroom, but this is more of a technical group where we just say, oh, I cannot see the image or, uh, um, we had a post scheduled for 8 a.m. and something went wrong, you know, stuff like that. But then we have the authors um, uh, groups, so it's a lot more interesting because there's where, that's where the discussion happens. You know, someone comes on and say, oh, next month I'm going to start writing about podcasts. Do you have any requests? What would you like to know about that? And 25 <laughs> comments about what the other authors want to hear about podcasts. So, that, and we also have a lot of laughs and, and fun on that. So that's also good to create company culture, what we will talk about. The other thing that I think really separates us from other blogs is how we find all these authors and how we onboard them. This is something that I'm very um, obsessed about, onboarding people in the right way so they can be effective <laughs> for the long run. Um, when we want to add someone new, when we want to maybe want to explore a new topic or someone say, hey, I cannot write anymore, I cannot commit anymore to writing, so we need to find someone else for that topic, we usually either do a call for articles, so we post something in our social media or a blog post and say, hey, we're looking for someone that will write about this thing, or we invite people. If we know that there is one person that we really want to see uh, on GPB, then we will invite them. We try to do a mix of these two things because I really think it's important to have different point of views also from people that are at different stages in their career. 
um, we, we don't always need the super top expert on a certain topic. Sometimes we need that fresh eye on that very same topic that might bring something completely new than the things we have read about for 20 years already. So this is how we do it. If someone says, yes, I'm up for it, we go through a very, very thorough vetting process. So we will go to these people's social media. We will go to these people's blogs to see what's their style. Uh, and it's not just to see how they write, because again, we can always trust our editors to make them sound better. I'm heavily edited. Every time I write, I'm like, just make me sound good. <laughs> so change whatever you want. Uh, but we want to make sure that they will fit with us. It's something very hard to describe because you know what the vibe is like. You have, if you have been reading the blog long enough, you know what's the vibe we want to create. So we don't only look for the good writers, we, good, we look for people that we feel are partners, that they believe the same things that we believe and we've been advocating for for five years. So this is why we check whatever they're producing. And finally, we have some legal paperwork. I know it might sound a bit overkill for a free blog that goes out whenever people can make it go out, but I think it's important uh, to create a professional relationship even if there is no money involved. Uh, so we have, um, in Italian it's called a scrittura privata, private document, it's between uh, people, you don't need a lawyer for this, and it states what rights the pub publisher has and what rights the author has. So for example, in our case, the copyright and the intellectual property stays completely with the author. Uh, we ask them to release the content with a crea Creative Commons license, and we also ask them not to repost to the same exact article anywhere else, because we want our content to be fresh. And then we create a user on our blog. Uh, we ask them to open gravatar.com because we want everyone to have a face. We're not, you know, a nameless corporation, a nameless business blog where the marketing team writes. No, those are real people, each one of them with the story, their face. So that's all important. The other reason why I think it's important, as I said, there's no money involved. So the minimum we can do to thank people for doing this is give them visibility. So I know visibility doesn't pay bills, <laughs> but this is not how people make their money. Although everyone that has written for a long time in GPB and has wrote, written interesting content usually has seen more business coming in. So this is why we do it. And we tweaked a little bit, we used the Genesis framework as a base, so we tweaked a little bit the code for the author uh, bio that it comes in with the, uh, with the platform to add as many uh, social media link as possible. So, and at least twice a year we invite all the readers to go look through all the authors and go click on those links. And if they want to hire someone, please go check what they do because you know, these people are really good people and really great professionals. And the other thing I feel strongly about is teaching everyone how to use WordPress. I know it sounds dumb, maybe, because you're like, oh, everyone knows. If you're a writer, if you're a blogger, you know how to use WordPress. Wrong. <laughs> I see so many articles just coming, you know, copy-pasted from Word with all the CSS. <laughs> so that's when we realize we have to teach people how to leverage WordPress for what it is a publishing platform, <laughs> first and foremost. So we provide every new author with a welcome pack where they have you know, screenshots of how to, use, and now I'm producing one because we're switching to Gutenberg, so I'm producing one this weekend about Gutenberg. <laughs> I'm gonna do it tomorrow on the bus. I have four hours, good Wi-Fi, so it's a perfect occasion. Um, so you know, we teach them exactly how to format uh, text and how to use all the WordPress options, what to do, what not to do because the editors or the SEO expert will do better than them. And we also set expectations and guidelines, how many words you need to write, uh, basic of SEO, and we provide a list of common grammar mistakes that I know it sounds very condescending, but it's great because we all have those words that, well, I don't know, in Italian at least there are a few words that were like, 
Do I put an accent? Don't I put an accent? Do I do this? So we give it to you, so you don't have to worry about that. And that also, people were really like, you know, I felt like, oh my God, I'm telling 40 years old women how to write this word. And they were actually, no, that's great. Also, when I have to write something for myself, now I go back to that list because I know I will find the answer. And finally, the thing that I really, I'm really passionate about, hence my job at SiteGround as community manager, is the community. And in this case, it's something that I would like to call company culture. Even if this is not a company, uh, I think over the years we created a culture. The first thing I think it's very, very important in any kind of community, blog, business, family, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's ban trolling and pettiness. Now, I wish I could tell you that it's all unicorns and star and everyone is wonderful and we never had problems. We did have problems both with authors that were a bit petty, like, oh, she got published twice and I got pu pu published just one. I saw you, you reposted that on social media five times and I didn't get reposted. Why did she get that slaughter? No, that's not going to happen, not on my watch. I usually ask these people, you know, after they're done with three articles, I'm like, hey, thank you for your contribution. Now we're going to bring someone else on board for this because we really want to give more voices. Unless someone gets really vicious, then I'm like, just get out. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very, very strict about this. Same thing about petty comments. It happened in the past that some authors were attacked. I stepped in and doesn't matter what, I'm always defending the author because if I pick that person to be in my team, I'm not just the editor-in-chief, I'm the mama bear <laughs> for all these people and that's how I feel and that's how Daniela feels now and we all feel a little bit like that. Um, so trolls are a no-go. Uh, offensive comments, they get deleted. I don't care if it sounds like a dictatorship, it's my house, my rules. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so it's never pleasant to deal with these things, but you have to deal with, uh, with them as soon as possible. Otherwise, they get big and you don't have time to deal with that. The other thing that I learned is delegate. So for the first three years, I did everything. And I felt I was indispensable. Without me, GPB would collapse. Untrue. <laughs> uh, I actually was... Now I know that I was the bottleneck for some of the things that GPB could have become uh, because I didn't have time to, to deal with that. Uh, so last September I was hired full time by SiteGround and I was like, well, let's close the blog, <laughs> of course, <laughs> because we have 80 people, but I'm obviously the only one that can do stuff here. And I was like, well, let's hear what these people, these 80 people have to say about this. And everyone was like, no. And Daniela raised her hand and she said, I'm good to go. I want to keep doing this and I'm happy to do this. So that's when I learned that sometimes delegating is really good and it's really helpful. And I realized it's very helpful to motivate people. If you're in an environment that you know will appreciate your efforts and promote you, which is, again, not a case of promoting. No one gets paid, but you know, uh, you can be more effective in a certain group, then you will step up. And then if you're the person there, you need to step down and let other people shine. And they, they'll take ownership and they will go with it. And GPB has been going great even without me being involved, beside being an, an author when they need a post about WordPress, basically. And welcome change. So the first year when someone in GPB told me, I cannot write anymore because I'm too busy. I was like, what? You don't want to be with us for the rest of your life? You don't, what? Are you leaving me? <laughs> That's how I felt. And it was terrible because then people were scared to tell me that they wanted to leave. And then their articles were not as good as they were. And they're like, well, their heart is not really into this. They're not leaving. So again, that's a sign that something is wrong. Um, so now I actually welcome this as an opportunity. If someone says I'm too busy or, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling very creative lately. So I, I honestly don't know what to write about. Ciao. Good. No problem. See you another, in another life. It's not a problem. Uh, so I think, I think, 
having change and having new people is always good. And that's like the core of a blog, right? Without the readers, a blog is nothing. It doesn't matter if you have the best possible content and if you have a wonderful design and incredible writers. If you don't have readers, you don't exist. So you have to find a way to communicate with your readers, not talk at them, teach them, always be the know-it-all, I know this, you listen. That's not how it works. You have to find a way to engage people. So we had a lot of things we did um, over the years. For example, on Facebook, every Friday afternoon, we post a graphic that says, uh, follow Friday. Uh, now is the time to promote your business. And we had weeks where we had more than 80 people going into the comments and say, hi, I'm Joe and I have a um, crochet business and you know, this is my page, come visit me. And it's beautiful because you s the, I think one of the best things that came out of that is that people started collaborating because they found themselves in the comment of that post, which is beautiful. Uh, in the past, we had monthly tweet chats. We had a book club, which was amazing, but it was so time consuming that after about one year and a half, no one really could keep up with that. But it had like a thousand people all reading the same book and enjoying that. And I actually have two ladies that are, they pinged us a couple of weeks ago and said, what's going on with the book club? I'm like, ah, we cannot, I can do it. So maybe it will start again. Um, and I think, again, nurturing the community, nurturing your relationship with the readers, it also makes it easier, again, to onboard the new people because they've been reading you, they, they're passionate about this, and then it might encourage someone when it's time to bring someone new on board and say, hey, I've been reading you for a while and I think I would be really good fit for this and I can talk about this topic. So this is really important. So I think now it's your turn. So despite the fact that basically two months after blog appeared, also articles that says blogging is dead have appeared, blogging is not dead at all. <laughs> blogging is alive and kicking and it's still one of the most important tools you have in your content marketing arsenal. So use it wisely. It doesn't matter if you're growing your, you use it to grow your business, to grow your community. It's always great to communicate in a way that it's a bit more permanent than just, you know, a post on Twitter that disappear after 15 seconds. I saw a graphic a few months ago that basically the shelf life of a tweet is 30 seconds, while the shelf life of a good blog post is two years. So imagine that in terms of you know, investment in your business. So even if you're thinking about a blog for your business, think about making it into a multi-author blog because more voices and shared responsibility will definitely help you grow. So that's all for me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and if you have any question, here I am. <laughs> Thanks. It really varies because uh, um, we ask everyone to submit their post at least 10 days before publishing day so we have enough time to work on that. We have some authors that upload six posts in advance <laughs> because they have a very clear idea and you know it's timeless content so they have a very clear idea on what they're going to talk so they post everything in advance and then it's great. We have some authors <coughs> that upload the night before publishing <laughs> and, uh, but in general, in general, we, it takes about 10 days from the moment the author uploads the post on the website to the moment we publish. Probably if, you know, if we were a real newsroom and people were paid to do so, <laughs> then it would take us probably a day to go through all the, all the thing. But since we're all volunteers, we honestly do this when we can. For example, the person that does the images, uh, she usually 
tries to do them two or three, like the whole week at the same time. She does that usually on Sunday night because it works for her. So she takes all the posts that are ready and she does that in once. The SEO expert also. She tries to do everything at once. The editors, they're okay doing it when it happens. So, but let's say the rule should be 10 days. <laughs> yeah. In terms of writing or in terms of people that write? Oh, writing. Yeah. That's impossible because, okay. again, we don't have an editor that can work eight hour a week on this, eight hour a day on this. Uh, I've got to say that it does feel very coherent because people have, all the authors beco before becoming authors have been readers. So they know the style okay. we use. Uh, the editors try to, you know, edit not really in terms of tone of voice, for example, but more in terms of readability. We want to make things as clear as possible. So, for example, uh, this is why I, I say that I use editing. Uh, I love it when they edit me because I tend to go on a spiral. And, you know, I start thinking of something and then I open a parenthesis like, oh, that thing and that. And then they're like, no, <laughs> this needs to be more linear. My question was really about the tone. Yeah, I mean, the tone, I think it somehow created a Chipu B tone naturally by writing, you know, the first group of writers were kind of a group of friends and we knew each other and some of us had similar life stories and similar businesses. So we tended to create a bit of a style and when I say all this thing like hey girl say hey sister it's true we really write about this and we this is why for example it's very the work with the lawyer and the accountant are very uh, these are the people that we have a hard time finding someone that fits cheap UB because they especially the lawyer tends to talk legalese I don't know why. <laughs> and so we need to make that a bit more readable and approachable for everyone, but we, we cannot really go so much into, uh, you know, editing really the tone of voice of everyone. And I also wonder if it's the right thing for this kind of blog. Probably if it was a, a company blog, I would say that's a lot more important to achieve some style of coherence. But for us, mm, we have a bit, we have a little bit, you know, in terms of, for example, uh, don't use tu, use vous, which you cannot say in English, obviously. <laughs> it's always you. <laughs> uh, don't use profanity unless it's me. Uh, I use profanity all the time. Uh, but as I say to my son, I created you. I'm allowed to swear, <laughs> so that's more or less <laughs> how it works. Any other question? Yeah. No one is approaching us. <laughs> that's awful. I wish they did. <sighs> so this is one of the biggest regrets I have. I see people with content that is far less interesting and numbers that are really smaller, making quite, I wouldn't say a lot of money, but making some money out of it. But we were so pure at the beginning, we were like, no. <laughs> we really felt like open source, right? We were like, no, we're giving this away for free, all this knowledge, because we believe in this. I wonder if five years in, what will happen if we try to monetize? The other thing is to monetize. You need someone that is dedicated to do that. And we have no one that is really dedicated to do that. So every year in September, we say, OK, is this the year we start selling something? I'm like, oh, we should try. And then we start saying, yeah, but who has the time to do this? And you know, the accounting is not simple because 
we need a company or we need one of us to issue invoices. And my accountant told me, you want to issue invoices for nine euros ebooks? Find another accountant. I'm not going to deal with that. <laughs> so, yeah. There is, there's definitely the numbers and, and the content to monetize, but we're not being actively searching for this. No one is actively <laughs> saying, hey, I really want to do something. So that we're not doing it for now. <laughs> we still believe that this is our way to nirvana. <laughs> Merci à vous.